Computex was a roller coaster of a ride. It was my first time to visit both the event and Taiwan thanks to MSI, and I never expected to see so many mini PCs on display. From familiar brands to a bunch I haven't heard of. Ultra compact form factor is definitely gaining momentum, and that warms my cold dead heart. Most of my time at Computex was spent running around like a headless chicken. It's hard to put into words just how big it is. Two exhibition centers with two floors each, amongst other smaller ones. I did try and visit as many booths as possible, and I have some interesting tidbits to share, such as bumping into an Intel NUC engineer at the train station, and then I spent a half hour or so throwing out every question that had been burning up inside for years, including what really happened with the Intel NUC division. You may remember one day Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger was praising the NUC, and the next, Intel exits the mini PC market completely. Well, after my long discussion, it now all makes sense. We'll go over it along with all the interesting mini PCs I had the chance to look at in more detail right after this message. Are you looking for a way to safely and quickly transfer files and apps to a new PC? Well, say hello to Ease Us To Do PC Trans, a simple to use app that can help you transfer programs from one PC to another or create a full backup of your computer. Try it for free with the link in the video description. Let's start with something unexpected. On display at the ASUS booth was the upcoming Lunar Canyon NUC Mini PC, which will feature Intel's Lunar Lake CPU. Oh, now I get it. As you can see, it's heavily AI focused. Boring. But it looks pretty cool and Lunar Lake looked interesting from Intel's keynote. Have you ever heard of Lever? Me neither, but they had a bunch of mini PCs on display and I had a quick look before hitting up a familiar booth I had been scheduled to meet up with. I'm standing here at the CYX industrial booth and you may better know them as Ace Magic. CYX is the manufacturing arm creating OEM mini PCs for brands such as AOC, AUSTAR, Firebat and so on. You might have seen their mini PCs from various brands around the place. And today, we're going to check out some of the more interesting mini PCs in their lineup. So, let's get to it. The Tank 3 is a very interesting gaming cube. Look at it, it's so compact. Except for the power supply, which is uh, kind of big. But it has an i7-12700 or an i9-12900H and also has a NVIDIA GPU. A 3060M, 3070M or 3080M. How exciting. The Tank 3 has four USB ports, dual HDMI, dual LAN, DP. Another feature is a power mode button, which I assume is silent, balanced, and more power. So it's very easy to disassemble. You just flip the latch, slide it to the side, and there you've got the SSD. Or on the other side, you've got the memory. And you can see inside, there's a fan there. Here we have the Ace Magic M2A, and this one's all about the gamer aesthetic. I mean, look at it, looks like a spaceship. It comes with an i7-12700H, or an i9-12900H, and again, GeForce RTX 3060M, 3070M, or 3080M. That's got four fans and they are all on the side of it. And on the back is where you find all the IO. So, if you're a fan of the spaceship design, oh, wait, I forgot to say, there's also a screen on it. Just like the Ace Magic S1. So that was a couple of interesting gaming mini PCs. Next, I had a quick squiz at the Newsmay booth. You may remember I reviewed their N100 fanless mini PC, which was pretty good. There wasn't anything new shown, but they have some new minis coming soon, and I may just be reviewing them. I'm standing here at the Minis Forum booth, checking out their latest mini PCs. This one you might find familiar. It's a successor to a NUC XI7. The only difference is, it has an Intel Core 9, 14900HX, and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070. Just gonna make people happy. It doesn't look like there's much more IO on this one, but the cooling has been improved and beefed up. 
This one has water cooling. It's a bigger shaped box than usual. And there's a bunch of ports on the back. There's even an Oculink port on this one if you want to expand its gaming capabilities. It's the G7PT. Comes with an AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX. And for the GPU, you've got an AMD Radeon RX 7600M XT. You can change the designs on the front. There's a bunch included in the box. So RGB glory there. There's a bunch of ports on the back, including Thunderbolt. No dual LAN on this one though. And there's a fan button for high power mode. So that's the latest Atom Man mini PC range from Minis Forum. And you can check out more coverage on it in the future. Before Computex, I heard that Colorful was jumping into the mini PC space. They're a big brand in Asia, and I've even had a couple of Colorful graphics cards over the years. I asked if their minis will be sold worldwide, and the answer was yes. But we'll see, as distribution of their products, even in Australia, is limited. They had two minis on display, the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H model, and an AMD Ryzen 8845HS. I'm definitely interested in taking a look at these in more detail in the future. I finally got to check out ASRock Industrial Mini PCs in person. They're not sold in Australia, and I haven't been given the opportunity to review them. Not too much I can tell you, they look like mini PCs, and a lot of them stick to the original Intel NUC 4x4 inch design. Something I was happy to see is the white version of the ASRock Desk Mini X600, which was on display and looks really nice. I also visited the Minix booth. Their Intel N100 fanless mini PC is the best budget fanless I've looked at, bar none. One new product they had on display is a Core Ultra mini PC that's coming soon. Here's the near finished product. Goes up all the way to an Ultra 9, which is the only one I've seen apart from the ASUS NUC14 Pro Plus, and promises a full TDP. Finally, I went to the Max Tang booth and they had the MTN FP750 Mini on display, which I'm reviewing next, amongst others. So, a lot of mini PC action at Computex, and my time was limited as there were events and gatherings to attend on top of the scheduled booth appointments themselves. And of course, I had the sponsored content to film as well and got awfully sick for a day, but them's the breaks. So let's talk gravy. I mean, Intel NUC. Unsurprisingly, NUC 8 Bean Canyon was the best selling unit in the whole NUC range, shifting around 3 million units. It was the first mini PC I reviewed on YouTube and my favorite of Intel's 4x4 inch NUCs. Judging by these types of numbers, the small team, and no marketing spend, you may be wondering why the division was killed off. Well, in short, Intel is not a computer company. They create processors and the original plan was to introduce the NUC form factor and have HP, Dell, and Lenovo run with it. That didn't happen for whatever reason. They weren't interested, didn't see a market, whatever. MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, and ASRock did all jump in on a small degree, but that wasn't enough. And so Intel decided to enter the computer market with their NUC idea as a way to sell more CPUs and push the form factor along until the big three jumped on board. And as I found out, this went down like a lead balloon, with the brands that make computers and buy CPUs from Intel definitely not wanting the extra competition. Despite the complaints, the NUC somehow managed to stay on the market. One concession was that the NUC was only to be sold as a bare bones unit instead of a pre-build, and another for there to be virtually zero marketing spend. Fast forward a decade later, I guess you could say Intel went too far and introduced the Intel NUC laptop. Again, a bare bones unit, which I might add is a foreign concept to the brands that sell pre-builds for various reasons. So it all came crashing down when big tech YouTubers reviewed and praised the NUC laptop over rival laptops. Shit hit the fan. Phones started ringing at Intel and meetings were arranged to meet up with Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger. I'm sure you can imagine the dynamics. Pat, what are you doing? You're a CPU supplier, not a computer company. Why are you competing with us? If Intel was a monopoly, I guess they could say, yes, yeah, so what? But with the threat of brands cutting loose and switching to AMD processors, Intel CEO was put in a tough position 
and the path forward to keep the peace was clear. The Nuk Division was killed off shortly thereafter, including the projects already in development. So there you have it. That's the story I was told, and this is why the idea of AMD making its own mini PC is a pipe dream and is never going to happen. The business world is very different to what you might imagine, with lots of dynamics in play, and our discussions certainly helped me understand what I thought were bizarre business decisions, like the zero marketing spend. You could say the NUC was a victim of its own success, but ASUS has now taken over the brand, and the two minis that were in development when Intel shut the doors have been released. Now we have plenty, and I mean plenty of mini PCs out there to choose from. Still, I'm glad I got some closure there. Oh, and if you want to check out my MSI Computex coverage, part one is here, and part two is right here. Cheers.